Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in to Main Machinist channel. This is Jeremy. We have a Volkswagen 1600 crank uh, on this rag right now. We're gonna do a quick video on evaluating one of these cranks for wear on the journals. And I have not broken the crank all the way down because I previously measured this crank and it is uh, undersized. And we know that from measuring here. So we're probably gonna move on and try to find another crank that'll be good without having to be ground. So we're not gonna take this off. And that's what you should do if you're checking a crank and you're just trying to find a crank that's gonna be a good crank for a rebuild project, then mic the journals that you have that are easy to get at first. And if you find that the journals are too small and they've been worn down beyond the minimum, then there's no reason really to uh, dismantle the rest of the crank and check. I mean, what's the point? You already know you're probably not gonna wanna use it. Set it aside on the shelf, save it for future use, or get it to somebody else that might want to have it ground. So we're gonna use a micrometer to check this. The first thing you wanna know is that um, starting here with main one, two, three, and four, and then you've got your rods here, and you got uh, three and four on the, I call it on the outside journals, and um, one and two are the inside journals. And um, I just go through and I make a list and you can see, uh, this is a customer crank. I blocked his name out there. Uh, his first name is Lee. I don't think you'll mind me sharing that. But anyhow, and I make a list, mains and the raw journals, and then I write my minimum down next to it. And in this case, according to the Bentley manual, you'll see that mains one, two, and three are 54.97 to 54.99 millimeter, which is not giving us much of a tolerance. I work with, um, you know, Imperial Micrometer. So I got 2.1641 to 2.1649. So you only have eight ten thousandths of an inch of a range that this is going to be good for. And that's on mains one, two, and three. Main four is smaller, you see there. And I, I've written all this down on my paper. And that way I can just quickly reference it. I don't really care what the max is because you're not going to find one this has been running an engine that's above the maximum. So I just write the minimums down and then we go through. You can't use a, a dial caliper or a digital caliper to do this. It's just not accurate enough. Even my really good Starrett dial caliper or Michitoyo digital caliper is not gonna be good enough if you really wanna find out what these are. You're gonna need to use a micrometer because you only have that eight ten thousandths of a range from your min to your max on the main bearings. And you got a, a different range on the rods. You got from 2.14, I'm, I'm sorry, 2.1646 to 2.1654. So you still have eight tenths there, but it's just a little bit different. Um, keep that all written down. Before we check them, I wanna go show you what I do with my micrometer from time to time. I'm over here at my granite table and I have a very nice brown and sharp, made in USA, with carbide faces, micrometer here. And if you're gonna do a lot of precision work, engine work, you really need a good set of mics. Don't just rely on a cheapy set. Get yourself a nice set. I found these used and evaluated them and they were perfect. So every once in a while, even with my good mic, I wanna to check to make sure the mic is reading correctly because we don't even have one thousandths of an inch of the range on that crank. So everything needs to be perfectly clean. Everything needs to be make sure that it's right. So what I've done here is I've come over to my Sterrett gauge block set and I've created a gauge block stack that is 2.164. And, um, you know, I didn't have to create a stack at 2.164, but I just like to create a stack that's similar to what I'm going to be measuring, in this case, the crank numbers that we saw a moment ago. So I'm gonna take my micrometer and I'm just gonna test it to make sure that I'm reading properly with my mic. And you can see here that I'm reading right at 2.164. So I know that my mic is accurate. The gauge block set proves it. Now let's go back over to the crank. 
Now we want everything to be super clean like I mentioned. What I did is I took a paper towel and I used a little bit of 90% uh, alcohol and just clean these off and just let it evaporate for a moment to make sure that everything's clean. Because when you have less than a thousandth of a range of tolerance, you, you really can't allow any dirt whatsoever to be in there or else you're gonna get a false reading. So with the crank laid like this, we can get our micrometer on most of the journals pretty easily and pretty quickly. And that's what I like to do. I like to just put a rag down or something just to make sure the area stays clean and then go ahead and try to get some reading. So we're gonna to try to read on number one main right here. And I have 2.1639. Let's see if you can see this. 2.163. And make sure that your mic has tents on it. And there's the nine tenths line lining up there, 2.1639. Now we know that our tolerance on the main ended at 2.1641. So this main one is undersized by two tenths of an inch. And I will measure that in several places when I'm evaluating a crank. Because we're also going to be checking for out of round. And on that spot, we're at 2.163 and 8 tenths. So unfortunately, we already know this crank is going to need to be reground. Uh, we'll check, just for the sake of the video, a couple of more here. Why don't we check uh, number two main? And this is the one that's notorious for where the case gets pounded out. And you can see that this one had gotten hot. You see the oil there. Okay, we are at 2.163. And five tenths about 2.163 and a half. And again, our tolerance ended at 2.1641. So this is a, uh, also undersized. Now, if we measure it 90 degrees from where we just measured it, and sometimes to do that, I'll come in with a little welding magnet. I'll just kind of move my rag enough to get the welding magnet to kind of hold the crank up like that. And then I'll come in and measure at 90 degrees. And we're gonna find out that it's not perfectly round, you watch. The numbers I wrote down earlier were from this orientation. Okay, we are at 2.1. 64 basically i bet even it's beyond the nine tenths yeah and that's about two tenths difference than it was a moment ago because it doesn't wear perfectly around the journal we'll get a reading here now look we're at 2.164 and two tenths so if we only took that measurement, we would say, oh, we're one-tenth over the minimum size, so we're good. We're at 2.164 and 2. But as we work our way around the journal, we found out there were places on the journal that were below the minimum. So we can't use it without having it reground. That's why it's important to get the crank perfectly clean and don't just measure it at one spot you got to work your way around the journal and find out all the data you can to see if it's actually good or not let's check uh one of the rod journals just for the heck of it
And on this one, we're getting 2.164.8. 2.164.8. And if you remember, on our tolerance on the rod journals, our minimum is 2.164.6. So this one, uh, at that location, was above the minimum. We're two-tenths above. However, I bet if we come around and we keep measuring, it's kind of hard for me to do this with the camera there. It's kind of awkward, but I'm still getting readings that I trust. We were at 2.164, eight again. If we work our way around, if we put put it back to the previous orientation, and now we measure what we get is two point one sixty four and four tenths, which would place this two tenths undersize. So I hope you, this video has helped you to see basically how I would evaluate a crank as far as measuring the journals. And this is how you want to do it. Very clean with a very highly accurate mic, everything tested, everything known to be good, and work your way down through. Now, if, if all of these measured fine, then I would say, okay, it's going to be worth the time to remove three and four and get measurements on those as well. But because we already know these are, are, are undersized and not usable without being ground, for this customer, they're gonna wanna find another crank and they might have access to one. So we'll wait, put this one on the shelf and see if we have a better option. Hope this is an informative video for you. Continue to like, share these videos. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and what else you'd like to see.